Welcome to Craftastrophe. Me, I'm T New, and I like to build things. You know, like little things, weird little things. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today as we explore the dark corners of the Craftyverse and get a peek behind the celestial curtain into the very nature of cause and effect. So, if this sounds good to you, then let's get our craft on. Foil. Pills. Goodbye, stress. Why? Alright, my goal here is to make a hollow egg shape. This thing is going to be a head, but it's only the underlying structure of a head. This plastic wrap is going to act as a release from the epoxy sculpt. Which is what I'm going to cover this with. Well, that thing is awkward. Ladies and gentlemen, my daddy is here joining us today. And don't worry, that stand is just temporary. Well, that's good because if you start building giant bobbleheads, I'm out of here. Well, today's your lucky day. No bobbleheads. Good. And this yellow foam is going to help to form a parting line so that when I sculpt the two halves, they'll be able to come apart, sort of like a plastic Easter egg. You might have been better off with a bobblehead. Well, this right here is some of my finest work yet. You know, Team Who, you trying to bait me? But I'm not falling for it. Okay, fine. Let's get back to giant Easter eggs. See, I've been knowing you long enough to know you would never build an Easter egg. Yeah. This is gonna be a hollow head. And it's hollow because I'm going to put LED lights in here. Let's cut out the eyes. And I ran into a few complications. This section right here broke. Let's fix that. Gold Star. Armature. Ah, I see you building the understructure for one of your creatures. Man, look at you go. Somebody's learning about crafting. It was your mother's idea. No, I can work with that. You know, this music makes me feel like I'm in an episode of Miami Vice, except there's no uh, fun or bikinis. Yeah, but there's quite a little bikini count in this particular video. Don Johnson is rolling in his grave. You know, he's not dead. Then no one's wife is safe. These dowels are going to act as the bones in the armature, and these holes are where the wire is going to fit in. Alright, I'm starting to get it. It's uh, looking like the drawing a bit. Yeah, that's always a plus. I'm going to reinforce some of the sections of wire. Double it up. Hey, you putting some JB weld on that. That's good stuff. That's not mine, is it? No, I bought this myself. Okay, just checking. Uh, that's pretty much all that's holding my truck together, so... Alright, now we got a basic armature. Let's add some foil. FYI to the audience, take a good listen. Tinu decided that it'd be a good idea to try to do this at 3 a.m. Yeah, you weren't happy about that. Well, I associate that sound with big chicken and I had to go back to sleep disappointed. I did a quick sketch of a house and then I brought it into Cinema 4D so that I could have a look at it in three dimensions. Then I settled on a design that I sent to my laser cutter and cut this out of cardstock. Now, it's easy to get the dimensions for a curved surface by bending a piece of paper and then marking it. Now I'm going to transfer these dimensions to a thicker piece of cardstock. You know it'd be a lot easier if you just made the wall straight. It's not really about being easy. So I'm going to bend this and glue it down. Oh man, good luck trying to clean the gutters on this thing without breaking in there. You've never cleaned a gutter in your life. That's why I had kids. Wait, I thought I was an accident. You were. That's why I'm still looking for a silver lining. And I sure hope you find it. You and me both. And this is some really thin, one millimeter thick EVA foam. Let's give it some texture. 
And this is gonna be roofing tiles. Yep, I like to cut them out one by one. Man, there's barely a single street line in this thing. Yeah, and no bikinis. Or chicken. It's just disappointment after disappointment. Yes. I've been playing around with the color scheme and now I'm adding some EVA foam. And this is gonna add a little visual interest. So what a bikini. Would you stop with the bikinis? Sorry, it's been a long winter. And this coat of black paint's gonna add some life to these tiles. What, by wiping it off? Yep, by wiping it off. I guess I just don't understand crafting. I also don't get why you start with one color, now you switch to another color. It's called changing your mind. Yeah, you get that from your mother. I'm gonna make some windows out of this blueberry package. So I'm sanding the plastic because I want the light to be diffused gonna look like that. Light diffusion. Sanding the plastic will give you a similar effect to a cloudy day and the light's gonna get scattered around a lot more evenly. And what is this thing gonna be? A chimney. I made it out of some XPS foam, then dry brushed on some red, and now I'm adding a burnt umber wash to really accentuate the details in between the bricks. And we're gonna attach it with some PVA glue. Now, before I attach any of the houses or the egg head that I made earlier, I need to get all the wiring and the lights in place. Lights. Now I see why you made the giant Easter egg hollow. Yep, and I also painted the inside white. That helps the light to reflect around. Tinu, this is clearly black paint. It's also clearly the outside. Boy, you're a little sensitive, huh? Yeah, that's years of conditioning. Reap your rewards, sir. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> this beam is gonna connect the two houses together. And this is gonna be the balcony. Man, this looks like my brother's carpentry work. He says that measuring is for sissies. Yeah, that's probably also why he's a person of interest to the FBI. No, that's because of the stuff he ordered off of the dark web. Okay, unlike my uncle, I'm gonna reinforce this structure even though it's a bit catawampus. That's not a real word. Now we're gonna make a base. Okay, I gotta be honest, this isn't looking very good. Well, there's a lot of steps in this project and we're still in the early stages. And you can see I scored the XPS foam to give something for the hot glue to grab onto. Man, that looks messy. Yeah, it is. But I'm able to shape out some rocks pretty quickly. See that? I'm able to get a rocky texture. Using gesso to do all my white dry brushing. It has gypsum in it, so it starts off sort of dry, and it has a nice surface tooth. Gesso. Scrap wood. Uh, between my laser cutter and all the projects that I do, I end up with a lot of scrap wood. I surely don't want to waste it. Man, Tinu, this thing is looking like a cross between a monster and a treehouse. <laughs> wow, I think you kind of nailed it, Dad. Well, you did hire me for my insightful commentary. That's just plain wrong across the board. Then why did you hire me? No, I, I didn't. Well, you should. I'm low on cash. <clears throat> this is PVA glue, and I'm brushing it on to really lock in all these pieces. In 2021, Hurricane Ida came through here and gave this area quite a beatdown. A lot of trees fell. And the only plus side that I've found to a tree falling is the tree roots. You can make some wicked cool little trees. 
and the tree roots are much stronger and more flexible than tree branches. A little bit of epoxy and some braided wire. And even though these are strong, I still add about three coats of PVA glue. And that makes it stronger? Oh yeah, much. Now I'm gonna glue this on. I'm using the braided wire, some PVA glue, super glue, and finally epoxy to get this all locked in here because it's something that you can easily hit with your hand and just snap it right off. I tried staining all this wood thinking that it would look cool, but it didn't. So I painted it black and started all over again. And that's just how it goes sometimes. Hey, here's a novel idea. You ever thought about planning these out a little more before starting? Man, I try, but things change and you gotta be flexible. Not me. Once I lock down an opinion on something, that's the way it's staying. Now, I've seen mama change your mind. Yeah, but in all fairness, that's a survival instinct. Handy. Let's make this guy some hands. A combination of toothpicks and PVA glue works wonders on XPS foam. It allows you to work quick. And this is where I'll attach the hand. The shish kebab stick will fit right in the drill hole. It's gonna act like a support beam. Yeah, that's another thing your uncle doesn't believe in. What, support beams? Yes, that's why he's always changing his name. Wow. All right, I'm adding some fingers to this guy using a little bit of balsa wood. Yep. Let's add some more paint. Here's a cool little easy weathering effect that I love doing. Remember, your finger is one of the best blending tools you have. Do it. Do it. Ah, now I see the wiring that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, and if you look at the bottom of the house, you can see toothpicks, and that's gonna help lock it into the platform. I'm making a small wooden door, but I'm making it out of polystyrene. And this stuff here is plastic weld, and it melts the surface of the plastic a little so that the two pieces are glued permanently together. Let's make a little door handle. Cutting out some sheets of corrugated cardboard to make a side garage and it's going to have a tin roof. Kind of bend it up a bit, make it look old and damaged. To make the tin look rusty, I'm going to use Modern Masters Rust Effects, which is a three stage process. It's a primer, some metal paint, and then a rust accelerator which you spray on and then it rusts the metal paint. And this is the garage. Concept. I started this project with the concept of a gigantic otherworldly creature peering in on a house, but that's all I had. But I started building anyway, hoping that if I got the ball rolling, the rest would fall into place. And it did. Now I don't want to give away too much about what this scene means to me. I prefer that you make up your own story. Let me know your take in the comments. One thing to keep in mind is that maybe not everything in this scene is literal. Now wait a second, you making an axe out of this foam? Yeah, the XPS foam is super versatile. Hey, it is kind of cool how you can uh, form it with the sandpaper like that. Yeah, you can also add some little nicks to it like I'm doing here for some battle damage. Mm -hmm. 
So you're using the same glue and a toothpick technique that you used earlier. Yep, that's my jam. It's pretty much the same building code that your uncle uses. This is some Aves clay shape. It's an air dry paper clay, which is great for foam because you can't sculpt stuff on foam and then bake it. Yeah, not if you don't want to face the wrath of your mother. You ever saw Clash of the Titans? Of course. It would be just like that. <laughs> yeah, which monster? All of them. I'm using a toothpick to add some faux wood grain to the axe handle. After applying the base coats of paint, a burnt umber wash really helps enhance the axe handle grain and also the nicks in the axe head. I made this twine by using some string, glue, and then braiding it together. If you want to make custom flocking for your dioramas, all you need is some potting soil and then you need to bake it for a while. And that's going to kill all the microorganisms in it. You don't want to wake up in the middle of the night and have your diorama look like something from Eraserhead. Or not. You're an adult. Do what you like. Eraserhead is no fast and furious, let me tell you. What's this white stuff you're putting on? Ah, that's scenic glue and it's to hold the flocking on. Hey, you paint some slime. I kind of think of it as moss. No, but... that's definitely slime. For this project, I'm building a very bad man. I'm using this template to get the human proportions correct. Oh man, what did this guy do? You'll see. Don't milk it, just tell me. Nope, milking it's the best part. I hate that. I've attached the shoulders and the legs by wrapping some wire around to combine them. Now I'm going to use epoxy sculpt to really lock that in. And this is JB Weld. I'm applying this in the area where your bones would be. A little bit of a head. And then once that's all dry, you see that I can pose this little armature in any way that I like. And I've added some pins on the feet. Oh, let me guess this one. This is a uh, costly. Man, you're getting good at this. Maybe I should hire you as a commentator. Yeah? No. You're better off as an intern. What? Anyway, my process of sculpting usually involves adding clay, baking it, carving that clay away, adding more clay, baking it again, back and forth. An intern means you don't get paid, right? Correct. Well, that sucks. Yep. I would never allow myself to be abused like that. You already are and you love it. You mad with power, boy. But it feels good. And speaking of mad with power, here's our guy. He's gonna be holding a shovel. Earlier, I said that the figure that I was sculpting was a very bad man, so this is good. Oh, it's a shallow grave. Oh man, that's right. How'd you know that? Several close calls. I prefer not to talk about it. <laughs> Check this out. Static electricity is your friend. It's the worst when they make you dig your own hole. <laughs> I'm not buying this. I'm using some more of that Aves paper clay to fill out the dirt on the side of the grave. Dinu, let me tell PDA you. PDA glue, that's gonna help the flocking to stick. Dinu, let me tell you. They say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? Well, not if it involves money. That follows you home, trust me. Mm -hmm. I'm using a black wash to make the dirt look like it was freshly shoveled out the hole. And here's the bodies. Man, Tinu, this is getting pretty grim. It's not as bad as it looks. He only killed one person. I made two bodies to see which one fits in better. And I'm dyeing this paper towel with a little bit of paint, and it's gonna be a blanket to cover the body. Yeah, that's smart, because the last thing you want is those dead eyes boring into you while you're trying to dig. 
gives me the creeps. And you said I was grim? Hey, it's your YouTube channel. I'm just an intern here. You really know how to turn it around, don't you? It's a gift. It's also the reason why I never ended up in the bottom of one of those holes. All right, I put some PVA glue down on the base and added some flocking. This is all flocking from the same batch that I made earlier. I just added some green paint to this one. And this is scenic glue. You nailed it. Thank you. Check this out. These are birch seeds. They look like little tiny leaves. My friend Jesse from Little Giant Crafts sent me these. I love them. Thanks so much, Jesse. And before I show the final results, I just want to say a huge thank you to all my patrons. You guys rock and I couldn't do it without you. Don Johnson would have nailed this creep in like 10 minutes. Do you mean Sonny Crockett? Maybe. Maybe.